What I'm going to show you now is a Geiger counter and how to use it in case you're lucky enough to have one of these at your school. So there's a few different types. You can have ones like this where we've got the window on the end built into the box and then we've got the sensing material inside here. Or we can have one where we plug in an external tube. So how a Geiger counter fundamentally works is we've got a window on the end through which our ionizing radiation can enter. There's a tube and this tube is filled with an inert gas. Now in the middle of the tube, there is a wire which a battery charges up to have a positive charge. And around the outside, we've got casing with a negative charge. So we've set up a potential difference inside our tube there. When the ionizing radiation comes in, it ionizes the gas inside that tube. When we have ionized gas, we have charged particles. These move through that potential difference and we detect a small current in the little wire inside the tube. So the Geiger counter itself effectively is counting the number of surges in that current and converting that just to a count of how much radiation it has detected. So there is some radiation all around us without extra sources added. So let's just start this now. So I've set the sound on. You can hear that it's randomly clicking as it detects some ionizing radiation. So we can test different things in the environment to see if they increase the rate of clicks. Now, before I look at these sources, there's some important safety information to use when you're using radioactive sources. First of all, stay away, as far away from them as you can because the radiation drops off very quickly with distance. You should use the sources for as little time as possible so that you're not exposed to radiation for too long. When the sources are not in use, they should be stored away in lead shielding so that they're not ionizing the environment. When we pick up these little discs, I need to hold them by the edges. That keeps my fingers as far away from the actual radioactive material as possible. I also need to wear gloves, which once I've finished using, I need to dispose of properly in a designated bin. If you want, you can pick up sources with tongs, which will keep your fingers even further away from these radioactive sources. So what I've got here is three sources. I've got a source of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. So the Geiger tube turns itself off after a minute or so. It's been counting the background radiation here and it's now gotten to 77 counts. Then it beeped as it turned itself off. So to look at alpha radiation, we'll put our little 241 americium source here, which is a source of alpha radiation. And now I need to restart my Geiger tube. And you can hear that as it's getting close to that source of alpha radiation, the number of counts is rapidly increasing. So let's have a look at what we need in order to stop these counts. Let's put a piece of paper on top of our alpha source. And you can hear with a single piece of paper, the number of counts has decreased by a lot. With a piece of cardboard, my number of counts is basically back to the background number of counts that I had before. So alpha radiation is very ionizing. It was causing lots of counts when the Geiger tube was close to the source, but it's also easy to block off. We could block off most of it with a sheet of paper and all of it with a sheet of cardboard. So my next source is strontium-90, which is a good source of beta radiation. So once again, when the Geiger count is close to it, you can hear a large number of counts, possibly not as many as for the alpha source, as beta radiation is not quite as ionizing as the alpha radiation, but it's still doing a very good job of ionizing the gas inside my Geiger counter. Now, if I put a sheet of cardboard on top of my beta source, you can see that it has very little effect on the number of counts we're hearing. So cardboard doesn't work to stop beta radiation. 
In order to stop beta radiation, let's turn our Geiger counter back on, we need a source of aluminium. You can hear with the aluminium in place, the number of counts is pretty much back to the background level. So my final source is cobalt 60, which is a source of gamma radiation. So you can hear it's not giving as many counts when my Geiger count is close. That is because gamma radiation, as we've discussed, is not as ionizing as the other two types of radiation. And so it doesn't ionize as many particles inside my Geiger tube. Now with gamma radiation, you can see putting cardboard there has very little effect on the number of counts. Putting aluminium there also has very little effect on the number of counts. To reduce the number of counts, I actually need to use lead. So here's one piece of lead, still getting counts. Let's put more lead there. This has reduced the number of counts, but they're still coming. So here's a big fat piece of lead. And now we're getting close to background levels of radiation. So when you're doing this with students, you can do it a bit more formally than we have done. You can count the number of counts in one minute for each of your sources and with each of your absorbers in the way to really see that the lead is needed to stop the gamma radiation, aluminium works well for beta radiation, and the alpha radiation can be stopped with paper and cardboard.